Hello. There's Monica. What up? And you are. Hey. And I'm Mills. And I have good news for you. Lecture video seven, and it's the last of the boot camp units. Hoorah! Hoorah! We're going to hit up the topic of density and matter, but don't let us forget our target. Where our learning target go? We forgot it. Well, I can dictate it to you, please. Okay. You got to understand the relationship between density and matter and the concentration the of matter in an object and how it's related. Okay. We want you to be able to understand and predict if an object will float or sink based upon its density value. Yep. But furthermore, we want you to be able to understand that any material, assuming it's pure, or even sometimes not, As it can be identified density. usually using its density. Almost like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. you know? exactly. So density, of course, is going to describe the ratio of the matter to the space it takes up. How much How much grams per how much a body? Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? It sounds just right. All right. There we go. You know? All right. Density is an intrinsic property. And intrinsic means that it doesn't matter how much of your stuff you have, uh, it's going to be the same no matter what. Right. Uh, and what's the other piece in there, too? How much, how much stuff or its temperature? There you go. So you can heat the gold up, and the density of the gold doesn't change. As long as it's still solid, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to heat it up, does. but guess what? Um, generally, I don't think we can melt the golden home. I think it's melting point is too high for us to get it up there. What we're just trying to get at, in fact, is that density is one of these secret hidden properties for matter. It is unique and doesn't really change. Okay, If you cut your sample in half, it's the same. Right. That's the key right there. Okay? If your block of gold gets cut in half, the density, the density of the left-hand chunk and the right-hand chunk are still the same. Right, because the volume changed along with its mass. Right. And they changed proportion. And then, of course, back to eighth grade, if an object has a smaller density, it will float. If it has a larger density, it will sink. And we will learn before too long why water is one of the only substances that has its solid form at a lighter density and ice floats on its liquid. Right. It, water is very unique in many, many ways. And exactly what he said. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah. Uh, example problems. How about that? Yeah. How about some example problems? Let's do that. Yeah. On the bottom. Easy. You talk and I write? Sure. He's yeah. got better handwriting than me. So density yeah. problems are simple. You're going to be given a mass and a volume. You have to calculate the density. And the density equations on table T of our reference tables, it's mass divided by volume. So grams per centimeters cubed will be our final unit. So the density says cubes got a volume of 100 centimeters cubed. So as it says right there, that's a volume and a mass of 150 grams. So that's there, right? Your mass. What is the density? Yeah, and this is the plug and chug piece. Yeah, the plug part. Right. So, I'm so gonna D do, equals. I got to do 150 over 100. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I can do this in my head. That's going to be at a 1.5 grams, grams per centimeter, centimeter cubed. cubed. That would be the answer. Beautiful. Okay. And now what we get to use it for is figuring out what the identity of the object or what if, if it would float or sink. Ooh. Water has a density of 1.0. And the density we just figured out was 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So this density is larger or smaller than that of water? So it's got to float, right? Ooh. Ah, I think larger, we just wrote larger would sink. Oh, so the bigger the density, the closer to the bottom of the container it would be. Yeah. Okay, so bigger numbers go to the bottom. Bigger hits the bottom. Ooh. That's a great way to remember if something's going to float or sink. Nice. Bigger ones hit the bottom. Mm -hmm. Other density mm -hmm. problems. These ones may get a little more complex. Yeah, math wise. I doubt it. Uh, we might need a calculator, bro. No, bro. We're good. No, bro. I can do no. Nope, you can do algebra, bro. I can do algebra, bro. <laughs> algebra, bro. Mass divided by volume. So we Got always that. start with our equation. Write it out. I don't care if you think you know it. Write it out. Unknown sample of metal has a measured volume by displacement of ten milliliters and a mass of seventy-eight point seven four grams. So we know our volume is ten mils, and the mass is seventy-eight point seven four. So we a plug in a chug it. 
78.74 divided by 10 equals. You can even do this, man. I can. 7.874. I love binary math. Grams per milliliter this time. Which oh. is the same as a centimeter cube. Yeah. They buddy. are the same. If you measure a centimeter vertically, horizontally, and in and out, and you fill it with water, it would have the volume of one milliliter. They are the same unit. Can you pick it up? No, you can't grab it. Let me click it and drag it. Try. Nope. But hey, it's all right. Try. Using 7.874, what would the identity of the metal be? Ooh, which one of these answers is closest to 7.874? Ah, I think it's iron. I think, I think you'd be right. Are we perfectly precise? Pretty close. We're pretty accurate because I mean, 7.875 be is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So that's good. So we did good in our lab there. Yeah. You'll actually do this as part of one of our labs. This is exactly. This is the last piece. You're going to get an unknown metal. You're going to have to tell us the density. There's going to be a bunch of densities listed, and you're going to have to figure out whichever one it matches up. And that is what a chemist would do. Yeah, we might as well tell you metal. right now. Ready? The claim is my unknown metal is, is. in this case, iron. And in the lab's case, it'll be something different. Well, probably. 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 Uh -huh. Guess what? That's it for boot camp. Oh, boot camp is out. Are you ready? You have the great benefit of being able to watch and rewatch any one of these lectures. Yes. Okay. And you also have the initiative to try the practice pages. Listen, we don't like to hold your hand and walk you through practice. We also don't want to hold your back. Right. Exactly. You got it. Go. Yeah. Don't wait for us. Show us that you got this, and we will promote you on to the next material. Right. And besides, anyways, it helps you if you do get stuck. That's no crime. That gives you questions to ask in class. And then maybe when we go over it on the board right. the next day, it clicks for you, and you're all good. And maybe you got to ask a question. That's okay, too. That's If you would never have that question if you didn't try. Right. Exactly. So he did say we were done, right? See you in the next unit, Atomic Theory. Yeah. Unit, real unit one. We're going to do some chemistry now. Okay? Bye, guys. I click the button and I turn off the video. What's going on, bro? Where's the button? Bruh. Bruh. Here. Bruh. Here we go. Bye uh, again. Whew. Bye for real.